Do you ever wonder if you're looking at the right indicators when making a trade? And you think if you just started looking at the right indicators, that would make all the difference. Well, in this trade, we show you an example of how looking at the right stuff, the right indicators, does make all the difference. Hi, I'm Mike Bellafuri, co-founder of SMB Capital, a proprietary trading firm located in New York City, and the author of the trading classic One Good Trade and the Playbook. Founded in 2005, SMB Capital trades stocks and options and futures and crypto, both as discretionary and automated traders. In this video, a promising new hire at the firm shares in step-by-step -step detail a trade example of how to scalp a stock by using the stock sector ETF. See us judge this trader with a numerical score on whether he made a good enough trade for him to reach his trading goals or whether this developing trader, perhaps like you, needs to do better. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Caleb. Um, I am a uh, developing uh, trader here at SMB Capital and today's uh, playbook is going to be on TSM earnings. How long have you been trading live at the firm? I've been trading live for four months now. And are you on a team yet? I don't know technically we classify it as um, a direct answer as yes or no, but I've been under um, team Dan. Um, I'm not sure if Jonathan and I are technically 100% a part of them, but we have been under Team Dan um, through our entire process. You're auditioning for Team Dan, okay. Correct, yes. Working closely under Team Dan, great team, great team at the firm, and looking for, looking for a little bit more confirmation, um, looking, looking for a little bit more validation that you're on the team, okay. Going into it, um, TSM uh, is going to be the playbook's going to be on their earnings report. Overall, it was a very strong report. However, um, they ended up they were gapping up into a uh, prior resistance level. So I'm going to go more into into that. 5.19 billion uh, shares for the float. So you don't really have to worry about it being a low float or anything uh, locking up. Um, institutional ownership is 17.40 uh, percent. Uh, the short float on the stock overall is 0.26%. Um, average 20-day volume is 11.98 million shares, and the ATR is 2.58. So going over the actual uh, report itself, their earnings report was very solid. Um, their EPS, they were expecting $1.33 with revenue of $16.8 billion. Uh, both beats, um, EPS was beat by $0.06, cents, which was 4.51%. And revenue was beat by $1.1 billion, which is, came out to be 6.55%. Uh, however, this uh, quarter, um, $17.9 billion for the revenue was a record-beating quarter. Uh, and then as for the guidance, uh, they only came out with quarter two revenue, which is basically in line to above what they currently reported. So 17.6 uh, to 18.2, uh, which was a 1.73 to 5.2% increase from the uh, prior guidance of $17.3 billion. Uh, so going forward, that they're they're looking forward to another record, another record beating quarter for revenue as well. But no full year guidance. No full year, not from what I saw, no sir. I really love to see full year guidance when I'm looking at trading and earnings play. And so that's a negative when I don't see that full year guidance in terms of whether or not I deem it to be how good of a stock in play I, I deem it to be. Correct. Yes, sir. I know that's like obviously the whenever I'm trading an earnings report, um, I have more conviction with the full year guidance uh, compared to the quarter. Um, obviously, like I know, like today, Verizon, when, when they came out with their report, they issued full year guidance. So that gave me um, more confidence uh, in that trade overall. So not as not as uh, still have conviction with the trade, but not as uh, high conviction um, with them being uh, quarter guidance instead of full year guidance. If you want to learn three more real world setups that our traders use, including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven figure big money earner, check out the free webinar that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing now at the top right hand corner of your screen. 
That will open up the free registration page in a new window, so don't worry, you won't lose this video. You can also visit tradingworkshop.com to register for this free intensive workshop. You're gonna learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop than from years of online education. So moving on to the emails, uh, basically one thing that Jonathan and I like to do is going through the emails to try and find um, any kind of extra um, evidence basically that gives us uh, confirmation to the trade. So basically the two emails that I pulled up, one was from Spence Tobias and then this other one, um, it was uh, basically an, an article um, from online talking about the um, the overall uh, company of uh, Taiwan Semiconductor. Repeating again, we get research reports sent to our inbox from analysts all around the street because of the firm's relationships uh, with different providers on the street. So this is a, an unusually, this is an unusual benefit that our traders get at the firm is that they're getting research reports sent to their inbox which they can read before they decide whether or not to trade a stock. And honestly, if we were to go back one slide, I haven't really heard anything yet that gets me super excited about trading the stock. And so we're gonna give you a grade on whether or not this is a stock in play from one to 10. And I gotta tell you, from what you've said so far, this isn't, this isn't a stock I'm super excited to call in play yet, but I'm still listening. Okay, yes sir. And like I said, into the emails, the reports, everything that they were providing was record beats. Um, and then moving forward, they're expecting the record beats as well going into um, the next quarter. Whoa, 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 um, whoa, go back. Whoa, 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 go back. One of the things that I want you guys to recognize when you're trading this is whether or not this was a stock in play. You're, you work hard. Your time is valuable. This job is important to you. Succeeding at this job is important to you. What you trade is as important, if not more, than how you trade. And getting, picking the right stock or stocks is a big part of the challenge. You can be the best trader in the world if you trade a stock that doesn't move during the day, you're not going to make money. You can be an above average trader, pick the right stock and look like a superstar, a rock star because you picked the right stock. So I want you guys understanding exactly why you made a terrific stock selection, understanding what it is specifically that makes this a great stock selection. And I want you to read through the analyst emails and see if you can pinpoint things that we ought to highlight. Yes, sir. And I know that's the, the one thing is going through uh, when you come up for me with dealing with earnings. Um, I'm looking at uh, with them beating uh, record beating numbers. That's one thing that for me, it, it shows to. Yes, yes, yes. So that's something that's interesting. Okay. Record beating quarter. If, if I were to highlight that, I would highlight that in green and I would highlight those words that, that gets my, like nothing's really gotten my attention so far, except now record beating quarter. That's, you know, dark green. All right. Anything else? No, sir. That is it. See, I would disagree with that. Anything else? The, the, cause there's something else that's super important. So let me ask you again, anything else? The demand for the uh, chip maker contracts. Okay, that's good. Anything else? Because um, there is something very clear. Gro the gross margin yes. which was on record high as well. Yes, 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 yes. Whenever we read that gross margins have risen or uh, declined, that's super important. That means, hey, we make a product, we're making more, selling that same product or we're making less selling that same product. We're making more selling that same product. That means it's easier for us to scale. That means we're making more money on what we're selling. That's hugely important for a business. Gross margins going up just grabs your attention or gross margins declining just grabs your attention. That in of itself can make a stock worthy of trading. 
All right, and so when, when we grab record breaking quarter and we add gross margins rising, now we've got something. Now we've got something that's going to get a lot of people's attention. Now we've got something when I'm grading you based on your stock selection, you know, we're pushing you and, and, I'm, and, and you actually mentioned that there's a technical resistance area that's super important for, for this trade too, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, I'm grading you. This is a 9.2 on stock selection out of 10. You know, this is, this is an A in stock selection. Before, we were like at a C plus. Now, we're at an A. Okay, good. So, and I, wa I just wanted, I wanted to go over that because I want you to understand why this is such an important stock to trade. Yes, sir. And I guess that for me going back and so I put it in here into the reported earnings for the record quarter, um, but I should have um, put it, I guess I'd, I'll update it um, going into um, the gross margins as well for the reported earnings. Um, Cause yeah, I had it written down for the revenue that it was a record quarter. Um, and then for the, uh, through the emails, uh, found that gross margins as well was a record high as well too. Yeah. I mean, look, it's okay. I, I got an email today from somebody who asked, Hey, how do you tell whether something is a stock in play? And I said, we look for catalysts, technical or news. And then he said, well, how do you find that? And I said, uh, you, you, why don't you watch our free YouTube channel? It's, uh, it, it takes some time. And I said, you know, you, you probably ought to take SMB DNA because we can't, I said, I can't teach it to you in a three sentence email. And so, you know, these are things where you got to go through training and then you got to get some reps and it just takes some time. Cause you, you know, you had a lot of this stuff down. I just want you to understand of the 20 things you have down, two of them really ought to get our attention. So going back, um, I ended up looking at the uh, previous earnings reports. So one thing that I was looking at out of the 11 previous earnings reports, eight of them had gap ups and three of them had gap downs. Out of those eight gap uh, gaps up, four out of eight were higher than uh, 2%. Uh, this earnings report, it had a gap up of 2.46%. Um, and then the other half uh, of the gaps uh, were less than 2%. Um, out of those 11 previous reports, six out of the 11 closed red on the day, uh, and then five out of the 11 closed green. Um, and then going into the trading range, one thing I know we look at ATRs. So one thing that I kind of look at for this trading range as well is that out of um, five out of 11 of the previous reports, the trading range was greater than $3. And six out of 11, the uh, trading range was less than $3. All right, great. What, anything you, anything you're taking away from here? So for me, it was that I, once we have the gap up, um, a larger, a larger gap than two percent, um, out of those reports, uh, six out of eleven closed red. Um, so looking at a two per, larger than a two percent gap up, um, one thing that I was looking for was uh, for a red close on the day. Uh, there's not much edge there though, right? Six out of 11? No. no, sir. Okay. But I love this. I love that you went back and looked at the previous reports. Excellent. Excellent job. I love how you did this. Really good work. Please keep doing this. Please keep doing more of this. And, and look, and one thing you might, you know, what I love about this is that it opens up a way for you to even improve what you're looking at. You know, for example, I think, and I think this is a good study, but I could see you actually working with some other guys on your team and also maybe getting some back tested data on, hey, if something improves its growth, gross margins during an earnings report, how many instances have we had of that in the last six months and what are the results of that? You know, or can we scan for record beating quarter? What are the results of that? My, my point is you're going to get better at looking at these back tests. 
you're going to get more sophisticated in how you use these back tests, but it all has to start at the beginning. And this is a very strong beginning. Excellent work. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to say for me too, because obviously in the, the monthly reviews um, that we've had with the, with the teams and, and with the firm, the one thing that I want to improve on the most is the technology side. Yep. Um, so, and that's for me, I, I said, okay, this is, I think this is a good starting point. Um, and then looking to, to build upon this as well. Yep. And on technology, your use of technology, I'm going to give you a 9.3. I'm going to give you an A, a 9.3 out of 10. Good work. Moving forward, um, so going into the trade thesis, SMH, the semiconductor ETF, um, has been uh, retracing from back to its lows from its uh, March 29th leg up. Uh, TSM had a very strong earnings report come out. However, it was gapping up into a prior resistance level. So with a weak sector um, and TSM look, uh, gapping up into a resistance area, um, I, I thought that there was a good short opportunity um, that would be presented if the sector would show weakness. For me, on, on this trade itself, what I was looking for was a momentum style trade. Uh, once we weren't able to break that pre-market high, which was also that resistance area, um, short on a back through open at 104, um, risking up to the All right, high so of day. Explain to some of the people who don't have as much experience as you what a back through open is. So a back through open, whether it's to the long side or to the short side, um, you have the opening print um, for the, the stock at 930. Uh, if you get a first move up, say into the 104.50 area in this case, um, you're looking for the, uh, for me, for, for the short side, you're looking to basically short at that 104 level again. Um, or if a stock moves down first and you want to see something to the long side, you would get long at that open price. So basically the back through open is the overall opening price of the stock. It's when it gets below the opening print? No, on the actual, on the opening print, uh, 104. So the, uh, the entry uh, could technically, it should technically be 130, 103.99. Yeah, yeah. I think, we, I think we just agreed in different ways. But yeah, so Correct. if we open up at 104, back through open means after it's traded up, right on the open, it then prints 103.99. And when it prints 103.99, now we have a back through open. Fair? Correct, yes sir. All right, we're speaking the same language. All right, good. For, the, for reasons to cover, um, if the taper momentum starts to slow down, since it's a momentum style type of trade for me, or if there is um, an ATR, a price target or ATR is reached. So what's your thought process here on, on TSM? So for me, I think because of it's it's in a you know currently it's it was in a weak sector. Um, you have uh, a very strong report in a weak sector, gapping into a resistance area. I think for a day one play, would look for um, for a short opportunity. However, I do believe that um, the overall company, um, based on these numbers, is something that is very strong. So it may be not a, a good. Um, day one play to try and uh, buy into it to go long um, but down the road say like a day two day three um, look for um, if you do uh, get say like a lower um, lower pricing i think personally that overall I, I do like tsm as a as a company as a whole um, they're seeing demand in their uh, in their chips the, they still have strong demand for their um, for their product, they're coming up with record beating numbers. So I think overall it's a good, uh, a good long, but because of the weak sector at the time and gapping into a heavy resistance area, um, that it's, it wasn't a good day one long. Um, so it may be a better setup for a day two or day three long. All right, so help me to understand this a little bit better. So your trade signal is back through open but we've had a really good earnings report and there's not much edge that based on your back study that this is going to close red it's 6 out of 11 so we don't have much edge there in the back the back test and you know back through open is interesting um, 
but I wonder if it's just enough to, to really take a trade. And it seems like for this to make sense, you'd have to be really relying on weakness in the sector. Correct. To take this trade. And if, if that's the, is, is, am I, is that what you're doing here? Correct. Yes, sir. Um, you know, why not just take then a different stock in the sector? Uh, because for me, I think personally with, um, when you come up, when you're dealing with earnings, uh, you're going to see higher volatility, higher volume, um, and exponential, uh, or not exponential, but range expansion. Isn't it possible that this would be a lot stronger than the sector since it just had a record quarter and the gross margins improved? So I think personally, if you, if there wasn't as large as a gap and you're opening at lower prices, I could, I could see that, but with opening up at a prior resistance level, um, you would really have to see, uh, the buyers trying to step in to break that level. So what's the resistance area that you're looking at for this TSM? A 105 is the area, um, on a larger time frame. Um, and then into uh, pre-market highs. Um, it was the after hour high reaction, um, and it was also uh, the pre-market high as well too. So 105 on a larger time frame, uh, and then 104.50 uh, to be exact on uh, the shorter time frame. All right, so I just wanna read your trade thesis here. SMH has been retracing, TSM had a strong earnings report, however, was gapping up into prior resistance level with a weak sector and TSM gapping up into resistance, a good short opportunity it presented. Okay, so to me, you want to be specific about what that resistance area is and on a scale of one to 10, how significant is. So when we go back through open, so in this case, it's 105, right? is the, the uh, technical resistance area? Yeah, on the, lar- on the daily time. Yeah, 105 was the resistance okay. area I was looking at. And on a scale of one to 10, how significant is that 105 just from a technical analysis standpoint? Uh, I would say personally, I think it, mm, I would give it probably about a f- five or a six. So not that important? Correct, yes sir. I don't like that that much because, you know, what you're saying right here is, is this just a scalp? So it was basically, it was a scalp trade. But one thing that when we were talking about with Jeff in the, in the call that day, um, is recognizing, uh, that kind of a trade that, um, could it be a possible trend trade, um, of a scalp, a scalp position or a, a scalp position basically, um, realizing if it could possibly turn into a trend trade. Is, is SMH expected to be so weak that that's going to bring some, some selling? I don't love this trade so far, so that, that's why I'm trying to get at it. I actually think you're doing really good work. I just, I don't love the trade strategy yet, and I'm, I'm trying to hone in on it. Okay. Um, I think, so basically with, with SMH, um, when we go further into it, Um, you had basically coming down from the highs, you created lows and you had a, um, the leg up from March 29. Uh, and so you've seen steady, steady decline basically in SMH. So if SMH is, uh, pulling back into a uh, support level, if SMH breaks that support level, um, that's where I was kind of looking at for, for TSM, uh, to have downside potential, um, with it gapping up into resistance. Did SMH break an important support level? I think it was 327. When you're laying out your trade strategy, and I'm gonna give you a little bit more time to sort of explain it with the technicals, I, I, I do think, and maybe this is my training as a lawyer, but you know, if we just look at this page and we just graded this on trade strategy, I don't think you're doing a very, I don't think you're doing a good enough job explaining why this is a good trade strategy overall. And I don't think you're being specific enough about why this is a good trade strategy. And what happens, and I see this all the time, when traders start to underperform and they start to get frustrated with their underperformance, that's why I'm bringing this up to you because I don't want you to feel that way. 
they, they repeatedly say the same thing, which is not specific enough about my playbook. I'm not specific enough about my trade strategy. It's too, just too loose. You know, I have a kind of an idea of what I'm doing, but I'm not super detailed about you know, what I'm trying to do here. And you'll notice we've been, we just started working with Lance, who presented to you guys, you know, Lance is, you know, the top trader, was the top trader at, at his firm for two years in a row, you know, star trader in the Shark, Swang, RAF, you know, biggest traders at our firm area. And one of the things you'll notice from him, he's super specific about what he's looking for. And just when I, when I read this slide, you're not specific enough. And I can see you getting yourself into trouble because of that and, and suffering a little bit of some underperformance. Can, can you see how you can be more specific? Yes, sir, I can. About your trade strategy? And, and, and can, you, can you see why that's important to your career? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay. So let's walk through the technicals. So I have the, the, the overall market and the internals. You had the uh, SPY coming into a 445 resistance area. Um, and then uh, down into support, I had marked off at 435. Qs at 348 and 338 was the range that I was looking at. Um, IWM 20250 and 196. Um, and then, then I just have uh, tick, VIX, and um, VXX as well. Uh, this is on the larger um, overall time frame, on um, the daily time frame for a bigger picture. So basically what I was looking at was on this day um, in this chart, it's this 414 is right here. So you're coming up into a persist, uh, previous resistance level for both SPY, Qs, and then SMH as well. When I, um, I'm gonna pull up, I have SMH on a different one as well. Good. So SMH yeah. right here at two, 248 job. and 239. Yep, so in terms of the big picture, because you added, you do a really good job pointing the resistance and support areas. You do a really good job including SMH and its resistance and support areas. And so for your breakdown of the big picture, you know, that's a 9.2, that, that's an A. That's excellent work there, teeing up that big picture. Thank you, yeah, and that's where I was saying, because I, 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 it might have been different, the presentation, the layout basically of what I'd have to, to change. Um, but going into it, uh, that's where I had the, um, overall the market internals on a, day, uh, on a daily time frame and SMH on a daily time frame. So going into it, you had, which I need, to, I should have explained better off the beginning, but SMH was coming um, back into a resistance area um, in at 248. So from the from the leg up at 329 right here was where I was talking about. So overall, it's been showing weakness down here. Um, this was on April 13th. April 14th, this is the day when um, TSM came out with their earnings report. So this is the day that I was trading. However, we weren't able to break that 248 um, resistance level previously. So that's where I was looking at where I thought the trade, it, it had, I had conviction with it because SMH, if, and that's why I said if SMH was showing weakness, um, because SMH was trying to uh, test, re, or retest basically a prior uh, resistance area. Okay, great. And this is the TSM uh, daily when I was talking about, so 105, so I have marked off here. This is the um, higher level uh, time frame where I was looking at uh, 104.50 here. So right into this previous uh, 104.50 and 5 or 105 was the previous resistance area that I was looking at for TSM. So going into the actual pre-market. So TSM 104.50 again here off the original uh, pre-market was the, the high. Um, and then going into once we hit the uh, 9 right before open 9.25 to 9.30. Um, we did get a push up. 104.50 was the the uh, high here as well too, uh, so that's why I was really looking for this 104.50 level. Um, if we uh, were looking to see either sellers step into this level um, and send it down, so one thing that I was looking at, I thought that you had two two or three times where you tried to actually break uh, this 104.50 level in the pre market, uh, and you weren't um, you weren't able to. 
So between uh, the original reaction to 104.5 and then once we had volume coming in uh, during the, the imbalance, uh, 104.50 was the high as well. So uh, that was the second attempt that we tried to break higher and we weren't able to. So I was looking at it for on an intraday standpoint, uh, once we actually opened up on the market um, at 9.30, were we able to break that 140, uh, 104.50 area? Um, ultimately, we weren't able to. And the level that I was looking at had a 103 support area before that we ended up, ended up ultimately, really, I think we momentum, momentum took it through 103. Uh, and we ultimately see that um, the levels that we had, we basically took away the whole entire move from, from the gap up from pre-market. And ultimately, the day two, the day two levels that I would like to look at for either continuation um, is if we if you get a first move up into the 100 level for a short uh, for a day two play or the um, earnings day low of 98.33. So that's why I, just, I usually have this this range mapped out. Um, but ultimately, the um, sellers were stepping into the tape and the buyers weren't able to basically hold the stock up. And it ultimately was breaking through the levels that I was looking at. And then these are going to be the overall market internals throughout the duration of the day. So you have uh, SPY had a first move up into 445, that 445 resistance level that we were looking at, um, ultimately got sold off from there. Uh, Q's not as much, they weren't, they didn't push up as high enough into that 348 level for resistance. Um, and then same thing with IWM. Uh, but overall, I think you can see that there's the downtrend in all three uh, spy cues and IWM. SMH was the same as well when I when I pulled that up as well. One thing that I was looking at too is that we ultimately opened up uh, at an 800 tick, um, which is I would say relatively um, I don't I, I think in my opinion relatively uh, or moderate I would say overall. Um, so we hit a high of. 800 around 820 for a high of the tick of the day and a negative tick of uh, below 1100. So one thing that I wanted to add into this um, was the overall sector performance. So with the uh, the database um, that we have with the ETFs um, or the sectors, TSM accumulates for 10.21% uh, of the SMH ETF. NVIDIA um, accounts for 9.02%, AMD 8.41, and then AVGO and MU and MTC. So I wanted to provide those charts as well, showing that overall SMH and the, um, the main uh, holdings within that sector as well were all uh, very weak on that day as well too. So I want to give you a grade on your technical analysis. I thought your technical analysis was really strong. I thought you did a good job showing the levels on your daily, and I thought you did a really good job pinpointing that 104.50 level that was going to be important when we opened. And you know, that, was, that was strong. You know, so you're going to get an 8.8 .8 for your technical analysis. All right, let's keep going. So going into the executions. So like I said, I ended up uh, shorting at 104. Um, once we broke that support level that I was looking at from the pre-market as well, I ended up adding into the position from there. Uh, we ended up did one from 104 down into 102.50. Um, we had a dollar fifty move. Basically, an ATR was 2.5. So about 60% of an ATR was done in in the matter of a minute. Um, so I did take a cover down um, into 102.50, and then I was looking to uh, that was the the main part of the trade. I took off 50% uh, down into uh, 102.50. Uh, and then I was looking to uh, basically if there was going to be continued momentum uh, to add on to my positions um, for pops up. Um, one thing that I was looking at was ultimately, like I was talking about with, with uh, earlier um, in the Discord this morning or that morning, we were talking with Jeff. And I think the biggest thing for me was trying to recognize if there is going to be a potential uh, trend, if this can be a potential trend trade. Um, so for me, it was just an opening drive uh, within the first 15 minutes. Um, but ultimately, I think the one thing, and that's where I look um, for my improvements on at the end of the presentation, is trying to identify quicker, can this be a potential trend day for the day? How much of this trade working and trending was from SMH 
being super weak on the intraday versus your independent trade setup? So basically with the correlation with SMH not um, being able to break coming into that resistance area at 248 with it showing that weakness that TSM was running basically with um, sympathy, basically. Yeah, but I'd rather you answer that question yourself. Okay. I, I think overall, um, yes, I think with, with SMH coming into a prior resistance area, um, TSM as well too. I think um, overall uh, TSM is the uh, highest allotted uh, stock within the, e the SMH ETF. Um, so I do believe with both of these SMH and TSM coming into these resistance levels, um, I think personally it helped out with, with the overall move, but I, I think um, overall I would say SMH played a larger role. Yeah, so I, I think your takeaway is this trade worked because SMA was super weak. Correct, yes sir. I think that's probably right. And I think it's super important to recognize that as a takeaway because there's gonna be days when you're gonna have a similar setup and SMH may be in a range, may be strong, may not be as weak. I don't want you to be confused as to why uh, TSM is, is trading a certain way. Yeah, I mean, it just strikes me as you, you found a stock in a super weak sector that traded along with this, the, soup, the weakness across, across the board in the sector. Absolutely. Yes, sir. I guess for me, like it was when looking oh, but I mean, at that's it. Why, um, that's why it's important to have teed up those technical support areas in SMH and understand where we're at overall with SMH. And, and right. you know, that's why you did a good job teeing that up. Thank because, you. Because, yes. Because the thing is, like, so, all right, maybe, maybe in this case, TSM finishes at the low on the day. I got to tell you, I didn't think it was going to finish at the low. I thought this was a fade scalp without knowing beforehand that SMH could be potentially super weak. You know, add in that SMH could be potentially super weak. I still don't want to swing trade this. This isn't an intraday swing low a day trade for me. This is a this is a scalp trade for me, okay. or or this is a on the open momentum trade for me. That this isn't something I'm I'm looking at holding because the earnings are too good. Correct. Yes, sir. And that's where I was saying with prior was with. Um, with those stock that's gapping up into resistance, I do believe that with the overall report that it was very strong. Um, so I, I wouldn't have conviction yeah. holding on to it no, overnight for sure. I completely agree with that. I think that's well thought out. But that's where, um, just because obviously when, when we were talking about uh, in the Discord was I, I got out, I thought, too quick uh, to take my last, my last exit. Um, and that's where, um, obviously I, I missed out on opportunity there as well too. Um, but I think overall, it's not like it was me wanting to say like to get into a position and hold it overnight. I just thought there was a little more meat on the bone that I could have uh, been able to achieve. Um, and I, I just wasn't I think, able to do I that. I think the trade is, this is a momentum scalp. And I think you might be thinking about SMH is really the swing to the low of the day. Okay. Below that super important technical support level. I, I think there's two trades here. Does that make sense? Yes, sir, it does. Yeah. Um, and then so going into the um, improvements, one thing that, uh, like I was talking, what I just mentioned about was being quick to identify the possibility of this turning into a trend trade. Um, I was looking at it as a uh, momentum scalp off the open for a momentum drive down. Um, and so I was basically, I think I was only in the position for about 15 minutes. So one thing that when we were talking about through this, through this trade live when it was happening, um, was being able to, uh, to identify once you see SMH um, failing basically from that prior resistance level, uh, can this trade turn out to be more of a trend trade for the overall day? Um, and basically turning it into a trend trade. No, it cannot be. No, it's just a scalp. Earnings okay. are too good. Well, I guess like, so personally, I will say 
for me, it was like, um, not like holding it more overnight, but more of like a longer time frame. Instead of just being in and out within 15 minutes, holding it basically for that, uh, say like 30 minutes, catching that extra, the, the extra meat on the bone is what I'm trying. That's what I was trying to get at. Not basically not holding it overnight. Once out of the core position, um, allow some exposure to, uh, to let run until the trend is broken. Um, one thing uh, for me, I, I personally, once we broke the previous day close at 101.50, um, I ended up, that's where I fully covered my position uh, from at 101.50 down from 104. Uh, so one thing I was looking at was I thought once we broke a previous day close that we would see continuation to the downside. Um, and we ended up spraying up to about one one o two. So that for me was um, basically that last 25% that I had, letting that position give that more time um, instead of it basically just becoming uh, an exit for a cover. Um, look to see if that is uh, just going to be a pop-up for more potential uh, to p potentially add into the position. And I think I, one thing I could have done better was I could have increased my size overall. With the, with the getting in at uh, the break of 104, uh, 104.50 was the high, so only risking 50 cents on the trade. Um, I entered in when I doubled down in my, on my position. Um, I was risking uh, roughly about 20% of a daily stop. Um, so for me, I think uh, with this type of setup that um, I was comfortable holding the size that I had. And so I think that it's one thing to improve on is, is to add more size um, when I'm feeling uh, comfortable. Okay, good. On your review, what you can do better, you title it improvements. Uh, that's an 8.8 .8 for you. Uh, overall, on your diligence of presentation, uh, you did an A. We're going to give you a 9.2. I thought you worked hard on this. I thought you did a good job on this. For your intraday fundamentals, I'd love for you to add the VIX, please, to that slide. That's uh, an 8.5 overall for your playbook score. And can we see... Do you have a sliver of reading the tape for us? So on the tape here, one thing that I was looking at with TSM at the 151, right here you start to see uh, this wall of the 104.50 offers come into play. Um, so one thing you have a large large uh, offer size uh, at 104.49 and then you have just a wall at 104.50. Um, so for me, that's where I was looking if this resistance level uh, was going to be broken, you would want to see it basically um, the offers get taken and you'd see a spray up above say like 104.60 um, but ultimately it just stuffed at 104.50 to a T and wasn't able to get anything any higher than that. So for me this is when I get short um, at that one oh the break of one oh four on the back through open, we ultimately ended up right when we ended up breaking um one oh four we sprayed down uh to uh one oh three ninety uh and then I got filled right there and that's where I, I held from the, the main entrance or from my main entry. One thing that I was um looking at um, like I said, this right here on the chart here, I had that 103, which was the support level from the pre-market as well that I was looking at. Um, with the uh, momentum, I felt comfortable with doubling down from 103. So now as you can see, we're still spraying down from the, uh, instantly from that 10, 104. Once we hit that, we're already down 80 cents. Um, we're not, you're seeing a lot of momentum coming into play, not a lot of bids coming into, uh, onto the tape. Uh, so I feel like momentum momentum is really showing that it's to the downside. Uh, All right, good. I think that's a good job. That's a good example of showing the reading the tape. Thank you. Um, you are going to get a 9.2 on your reading the tape. So I owe you scores for your trade strategy. I think your trade strategy is where you need to do better. I, th I think your trade strategy needs to be clearer here. I, need to, I think it needs to be more specific. And, you know, out of 10, based on where you're at in your career, 
that's a 7.5 and that's something that needs improvement. For your trade management, 9.2, I thought you did actually a good job even though you thought you could have held a little bit longer, but I thought you did pretty solid right there. And Kurt will tally up the scores. Now for you, you've got a high bar here. You've got to come in at a 90 for you to be tracking to keep your seat on the desk. And Kurt has you coming in at 88.9. So I thought you actually, you know, it's interesting. And, and I know you're hard on yourself. And uh, I actually think of my son last night. We were throwing a side session for his game on Saturday. And, you know, he threw a couple of pitches where he was upset with himself. And I, I sort of took him aside and I said, Luke, when you throw a pitch really, really well, I, I want you to remember what that feels like. And I said, you're going to throw some pitches that are not, I mean, he's eight. I'm like, you're not going to, you're going to throw some pitches that are not so great. You're going to throw some pitches that are high. You're going to throw some pitches that are outside. You're going to throw some pitches where you don't throw it as hard as you want. Like, just don't worry about those pitches. But like when you throw something really well, I want you to remember that feeling when you threw that pitch. And I, and I want us, I want us to work on doing more of those pitches. And then when he hit, I said the same thing to him. And, and so I'll say the same thing that I said to him that I'll say to you, which is, look, you do need to do better on your trade strategy. You do need to be more specific, but you did a lot of things here super well. You know, really good job with your back test, really good stock selection, really good job with your big picture, really good job with your technical analysis, really good job with your review and your diligence. You know, so there's so much good here that what I want you to take away from this is let's just apply all that goodness next time to your, tr your trade strategy. Yes, sir. And if you're not doing as well as you want to at this, at this stage, well, we know why. We know where to work. And it's the specificity for you of your trade strategy that can really catch up with the other excellent work you're doing. Does that make sense? Of course. Yes, sir, it does. All right, great. And I know as a former baseball player, you sort of understood that analogy. Yeah, uh, I was going to say you want to muscle memory. You want to repeat, repeat that feeling, that good feeling. You, what did you do? And you want to build on that. Yep. And you want to continue to, um, to build on that to improve. Hey, go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos they are producing for you in the trading community. And please take the time to add your feedback in the comment section for what videos you'd like for us to produce next and what you found helpful from this video from all of us at SMB, train and trade well.